Not at all. Sorry I couldn't be there in person. Well, no problem. If, if you win next week at Augusta, all is forgiven. <laughs> uh, 100%. And, and defend my title, too. Yeah, that, too. That, too. But we, uh, we, we've got uh, a large contingent of media in the room. I uh, want to ask you some questions. Uh, I'll just kind of start out and let you uh, get started with some uh, recollections of last year, uh, how many holes you ended up playing on Sunday, um, what you remember about last year, obviously the memorable fist pump and uh, birdieing the last two holes, memorable fist pump and point to the Zurich logo and, uh, and the uh, skybox behind 18. Uh, yes. So uh, tell, us, t tell us about last year, what you remember. Um, yeah, well, I, you know, first thing I remember, maybe after nine holes of the tournament, I think I was over par. I think I turned in one over, and um, I think it was a low-scoring day, so I felt very much behind the curve, but um, played a good back nine. I uh, can't remember exactly what I shot, if I shot three or four under on the back nine, or, or four, four or five under. I think I shot 69 or 68, did I, the first day? Or 70, maybe? I'm not sure. But anyway, I had a good back nine to kind of, uh, you know, feel like I didn't lose too much momentum early in the tournament. That's my first recollection of the week. And then really from that point on, just played some good steady golf and got myself into contention. And uh, there were a bunch of guys vying for the title. It was a very bunch leaderboard, I remember, on Sunday. And, uh, you know, Jason Day was right there and, you know, obviously a few other guys looking for their first win. So, you know, I remember playing 16 and thinking to myself that, I'm going to have to do something special coming in here. Whoever's going to win this tournament. Hello, did I break up there? It broke up just a little. I think we still have you, though. Did you guys lose me for a second? Just, just for a second, but uh, it's a little choppy right now. Can you still hear us? Yeah. Okay. Jackson, I think your audio is fine. It's, it's the, the uh, video is breaking up a little bit. Okay, I seem to have you guys back. I'm not sure if you got me. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, well, I'll keep talking. So, um, you know, playing the 16th hole, I certainly remember thinking, like, I, somebody was going to have to do something to break out of the pack. And um, I had a good number into the 16th hole. I had a little 9-9 in there, but, I, you know, I sort of missed the green on the edge and uh, chipped and putted for my par, and then... You know, the, the, the 17th hole is quite a daunting prospect to try and make birdie, but, you know, I hit a great five iron in there. I was left of the hole between the pin and the water, which is probably not exactly where you're aiming, but I was trying to hit an aggressive shot in there. I was probably trying to be eight feet to the right of the hole, not eight feet to the left of the hole, but uh, either way, it was a good shot. And um, it, was a, it, was, it was an important putt to make to give myself the opportunity to birdie 18. And, uh, you know, because I was the head of some of the other guys, you never really knew exactly what it was going to take, but I felt like if I birdied 18, it was going to be good enough. So, um, you know, I hit a good drive down there on 18 and uh, pulled my second shot left of the green and had a bit of an awkward up and down, but, you know, hit a decent pitch shot, which landed on the downslope of the bunker and released out to about 12 feet. And, uh, you know, I just remember hitting that putt and really having no other thought than making it. And I felt like it was going to be a critical putt. You know, and I felt like if I made birdie, I was going to win the tournament. So to bury that putt, I mean, when I watched it back on replay, it actually goes in with a bit of pace. Um, there was definitely, a, you know, I had a one-track mind on that putt, which was fantastic. And, you know, the emotion in which I showed afterwards was obviously, you know, it was a fun place to, to make a putt in front of a lot of my friends. You know, I've been, you know, Zurich ambassador for a number of years now and, uh, you know, not just, um, you know, I've made a lot of friends within the organization, obviously, and uh, it was fun to win in front of them this time. So it meant a lot to me personally, and it was fun to share it with them. Outstanding. Yeah, it was uh, very memorable, and we enjoy seeing the, uh, during the World Golf Championship commercials, uh, they show your putt over and over, and we always love to see that. Yeah, course. that's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's nice to relive it once in a while when I, when I watch TV. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that uh, before we open it up to questions from the floor, we would like to thank you for uh, your very generous donation to the Four Kids Foundation oh, uh, of $25,000 after your win last year. Uh, obviously, you know, we do a lot of work to try to benefit the lives of children in our area. Yes, yeah, Steve, you're breaking up on me a little bit. I'm kind of getting every second or third word right now. Oh, sorry. Um, 
Can you hear me now? I heard the Four Kids Foundation. Yes. Sure. Your uh, your donation, your your donation after the tournament last year back to the foundation to help the lives of kids in in New Orleans. We we uh, just want to make yes. sure you know how much we appreciate that and how much impact it has. Okay. Well, I didn't hear you 100 percent, but obviously, you know, being a, a Zurich ambassador, one thing that they seem to do very very well is support the communities in which they work obviously i think that's incredibly important for a for an insurance company because quite often you know they deal with with tough situations where people are trying to re rebuild their lives and to support communities is very very important i think also the pga tour drums that into us that you know supporting the 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 cities in which we visit is important and um you know through our own foundation the kate and justin rose foundation we try to support the places where we live so I just felt that, you know, you guys with the, you know, you guys with the Four Kids Foundation are doing such a great job, you know, especially there in New Orleans, that to come away and have such a sort of a fantastic week and to come away with, with so much from such a great city, I felt like it was important for me just to give back. Well, it was very, very much appreciated. So thank you. Why don't we take the questions yeah. and, and rather than have a shout across the room, just shout it at me and we'll, or Steve can ask him. Steve, would you mind asking Justin, because of his love for the city and, and the, the foundation of the people, uh, what would it be like for him if he, uh, to come back as the defending champion of this tournament? Can you hear that, Justin? The question is given... Uh, yeah, well, it's, you know, it's an event that I've always really enjoyed, first and foremost, coming back to, you know, the Zurich Classic in New Orleans. It's a... Uh, it's a fun week, and I think that it's a week that a lot of players embrace. Um, you know, there's a couple of functions that are held during the week, especially the one at Emeralds. You know, and sometimes it's very difficult to get PJ Tour players outside of their normal routine. And, um, you know, that's one of the most well-attended functions all year on any tournament um, that, that I've ever seen. So, you know, it's a testament to what New Orleans is all about. Uh, it's a testament to the Zurich Classic. It's a testament to the tournament that a lot of the players support, um, you know, some of the extracurricular activities that, that go on. Uh, I certainly look forward to coming back. You know, like I said, I've, I have a lot of friends now within the Zurich organization, and it's always a joy to see them and catch up with them. And I've made a lot of friends, you know, at the Zurich Classic over the years. The locker room guys, Stacey and Ronald, you know, are fun to be around and, um, you know, the clubhouse staff we always get great service there. And, you know, it's just whenever you go somewhere for four, five, six, seven straight years, you know, it begun, you, know you begin to, to meet people and get to know people. So it's always fun to come back. Wonderful. Thank you. Justin, your shot on 13, when you came close to the pin, did you have an inkling when you saw that go, just go almost in and then Cameron was kind of struggling? Was that a point where you thought that you could possibly – Win the tournament? Um, I lost you there at Inkling. Sorry. This is probably frustrating for you guys. But At, at that point, did you have an inkling you could win did the Did I tournament? have an inkling? Uh, an inkling you could win the tournament at that point. I'm sorry. I lost the whole question. I just caught the, caught the first couple words. On, on 13, your shot on 13 that came close to the pin. You okay. Birdied it. You birdied it, and then Cameron was the leader. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, thirteen's a hole that you want to take advantage of. Um, you know, it's it's a birdie hole, and you feel like if you don't birdie it, you feel like you're dropping. You know, you may be dropping half a shot to the field. So, um, and, you know, it's important to kind of, in those moments, make make the most of those uh, make the most of those opportunities because. You know, certainly 14, 15, you know, are, are not, you know, are pretty tough holes as well. And, you know, 17 as well. So there's not man, that many birdie opportunities on the back nine. Can you ask about the Olympics? Yeah. Uh, do the players talk about it? Are they excited about it? And how much it means to potentially represent their country with golf coming back for the first time in 100 years? Yeah, well, personally, I mean, I'm very excited. You know, there hasn't been tons of talk about it. You know, I think there's going to be a very busy summer and, you know, guys right now are you know, focused on the Masters and, you know, but once we get into the summer, you know, all the big events come around thick and fast. But 
you know, for me personally, I can only speak for myself. I'm certainly very excited about it. I'm, you know, certainly trying to embrace the Olympics. Uh, I'm going to head down there early and try and be a part of the opening ceremonies and really get a feel for it. And, uh, yeah, just try and take in the whole experience. You know, it could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for, a, you know, in a, or once-in-a-career opportunity. So, I, uh, you know, I've, I'm, I'm very much excited about it. And, uh, you know, my wife was a former gymnast, you know, at a very high level. Her type of gymnastics was never Olympically recognized, which she one day hoped w it would be. And, you know, for her, a dream would have been to compete in the Olympics. So, you know, for my household, this is now the next best thing. Well, you know what? It's, you know, everyone has their schedules very set in their head, and um, you know everyone's pretty uh, pretty set on what they do. But all you can do is just talk highly about a tournament and say, you know, it's a fun place to be. Um, you know, it's a great. You know, it's a perfectly run tournament. Um, it's you know, it's a unique tournament, and you know, you just got to speak highly of it. Fifty-two other weeks of the year, and you hope that when it comes down to the scheduling process, if a guy's in a fifty-fifty kind of mood then, you know, those sorts of comments will swing him at the end. Uh, Justin, what, uh, what's the reputation of this tournament amongst the players on tour? And have you noticed that the players have begun to think very highly of this stop in recent years? Uh, yeah, I think you've al almost answered the question yourself there, that the fact that, you know, the reputation, I believe, has um, it's gotten stronger and stronger. I feel like the, you know, the, the commitment of Zurich over the years has made it, um, you know, one of the one of the top tournaments, you know, in terms of, you know, certainly financially and everything like that. But the, the whole Zurich ambassador program, Zurich's visibility in golf, I think makes the tournament stand out. And, um, you know, TPC Louisiana is a golf course that's certainly grown on everybody. And just the whole story of New Orleans, I think, has, uh, you know, has a, has a, has a pull um, for guys to come and play. And, you know, you know, if, especially if you're a foodie kind of person and, uh, you know, New Orleans or New Orleans, I still quite haven't made my mind up how to say it but uh um it's uh it's just an incredible city that's so unique and so different to all the others that i think it provides um you know a very it, it provides a very different feel to most of the other pga tour events and you know hopefully guys embrace that justin when will you head to augusta and what's your playing schedule leading up to the uh, zurich yes basically um I'm going to head up to Augusta Friday and Saturday, play a couple of quiet practice rounds, and then uh, I'm going to come back home Sunday and Monday and then fly back to Augusta on Tuesday. Um, so, you know, I like to do my practice for majors when it's quiet, um, before, before it comes a bit of a zoo. Um, and I don't like to be there too long, which is why I come home. I feel like if I was to be there Friday, Saturday, and then try and stay in Augusta right through to the following weekend, um, I'd probably drive myself a little nuts to be honest with you so it's nice to come back home and, and get out of the mix for a couple of days and stay fresh mentally and then after that i take two weeks off i have some friends coming uh home to the bahamas uh after the after the masters for a for a fun week and then um spend a week practicing before my fifth major uh the zurich classic good answer <laughs> Well, you know, I'm probably being a little biased. It's grown on me over the years, you know, and that culminated last year in a great result. Um, you know, Pete Dye golf courses sometimes can uh, take a lot of getting to know. You know, he's a master of illusion in a way and, and trickery. And, you know, I've just sort of over the years begun to figure out how to play his courses. I mean, TPC Sawgrass is a, is a venue that I haven't had a particular amount of success at. And I feel like at the Zurich Classic, I ha I've got better year on year. So, um, you know, it's going to be tough to improve on last year, but just maybe winning by more would have to be the goal. But I've certainly got better every year and, you know, I've gotten to understand the course. And, you know, I think that the conditioning of it has gotten better year on year. And, you know, it's, it's a good, it's, it, it doesn't sort of, 
it's a kind of golf course that doesn't suit a bomber. It doesn't suit a short hitter. It kind of appeals to all types of game, which I think uh, makes it a very attractive golf course for most guys' schedules. You know, there's a lot of venues out on tour that are very one-sided in terms of who they favor. And I feel like this golf course doesn't particularly fit into anybody's wheelhouse, which is a good thing. Justin, would you just elaborate a little bit further on your, your uh, getting ready for the Olympics, okay? And what would it mean to you uh, for a PGA Tour player to possibly win a gold medal? Where do you put that in your, the, the world of golf for you? Yeah, so, you know, my, my, my preparation is going to be very much the same for the Olympics as it's going to be for all the majors. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have a schedule that looks very much week on, week off, week on, week off, week on, week off around, you know, for pretty much from the U.S. Open right through to the, uh, to the Olympics. There's, there's not a lot of time to do anything special with your preparation other than I'm going to get down to Rio early, get to know the course um, and just take in the atmosphere. You know, I think that that's going to be something that will be special. And, um, you know, if you get excited and enthused about something, that can only help. So uh, at that point of the year, it's going to be about recovery and staying fresh. Those are going to be the priorities rather than training harder and working harder. It's going to be who can recover the best and keep their level. Um, and then I think in terms of winning it, I, I think that the Olympics will have a very, it will have its own little special um, asterisk by it, you know, at the end of your career, you know, hopefully it'll be, you know, Justin Rose, m multiple major champion and also a gold medal winner, you know, at the Olympics, an Olympic gold medalist. I think it's going to be a, something that stands apart and it's going to be, a, you know, a, like in golf, in golf, obviously we've all historically been judged by how many majors and what have you that we've won and world ranking, etc. And I think that this is something that's going to stand apart from all of that. And um, it's just going to be a very nice cherry on the top, I believe. Just wondering if, I'm not sure how much you know about what the field is going to look like this year here, but um, if you're aware of a certain number of players who are coming to New Orleans, I wondered if you could comment on the strength of the field and, uh, and who you think is not playing particularly well. Yeah, well, I think the strength of the field is going to be very sort of, you know, diverse from the top end to the bottom end. You're going to have the best players in the world, but some of the, also some of the best players in the world are going to miss out. You know, the United States are only going to be able to field four players in the top 15 in the world rankings, which means that, you know, some of the top players that, that could easily be gold medal contenders are not going to be there. So um, the strength in depth is probably going to be, less than a, than a major championship for, for sure, but you're going to have top players. And I think that that's what the Olympics needs because, you know, you need the top players to go head to head to make anything exciting and to make it, you know, relevant. So provided, you know, the top two from every country turn up and play and play their hearts out, um, that's what it's going to be about. And that's going to give it a lot of credibility. The New Orleans field? Yeah. Do you know, are you aware, yeah. Are you familiar who's yet? I mean, I don't know exactly who's playing and what have you, but, um, you know, I feel like the New Orleans field, it, it's testament to the PGA Tour in terms of the strength and depth that there is right through, right through the PGA Tour. Um, not everybody might be a household name, but everybody has a great story and everybody is a great player. And everybody has many great storylines and many breakthrough players that are able to come out and uh and make a name for themselves especially you know in these in you know like in the Zurich Classic for example um you know it's a big 156 field yes you know which we don't always play so um you know you you do get to see some 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 new names and stuff like that but uh you know again you've got the top players you've got you've got a tournament only needs most tournaments are built around three or four four players anyway, typically from a, from a marketing point of view. And, uh, you know, the Zurich Classic does a great job of, of getting those players. Thanks, Justin. Well, okay. we really appreciate your time. Good luck at Augusta. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you here in a few weeks. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Keep up the great work there. And, I'll, yeah, look forward to being with you all soon.
Sounds great. Thank you very much. All right. See you Thank for you now. Justin.